You see, when I talk about these age-related illnesses, we're all aging, but we don't all come down with cardiovascular disease. We don't all come down with autoimmune disease. We don't all come down with cognitive dysfunction. We don't all come down with cancer. But the chances are we're going to come down with one of them. All right? And here we have this one drug that's able to help us holistically with our biochemistry to restore balance. You know, cannabinoids kill cancer cells in many cases. People are not aware of that. They think cancer, cannabis, anti-nausea. It's way beyond that. Really? Can oh, you yeah. talk more about that? We have time. <laughs> Would you please? There have been a number of cancers that in experimental situations, okay. nerve can um, breast cancer, prostate cancer, pheochromocytoma, uh, lymphoma, leukemia, skin cancer, a whole variety of cancers that in experimental situations, meaning in tissue culture or in animal models, you can in fact show that cannabinoids kill these cancers. And a lot of people are quite excited about the ability of these cannabinoids to kill cancer cells. There are some studies that have shown that cannabis, I think they specifically use THC in that case, if it was an earlier study from quite a long time ago, I think in the 70s, where they tr looked at uh, cancer in particular rats, I think, and yeah. showed that they were able to inhibit uh, cancer, lung cancer specifically. Yeah. In Madrid it was a different story, not from the 70s. This was done by Manuel Guzman's group uh, within the past less than 10 years, and what they showed there was that originally that THC, when injected into a brain tumor in mice and rats, uh, a significant number of those animals, would the tumor would regress and disappear, so that you actually had survival of rats that, uh, that would otherwise die. And they examined all the surrounding nerve tissue, and that was all fine, because remember, once again, cannabinoids protect nerves. So here you have such an interesting situation. This anti-cancer drug now, THC, is killing tumors and protecting the surrounding tissue. That's totally the opposite of what happens with all other chemotherapeutic approaches. So it was a result of those animal studies that they did a fairly small clinical trial because after all you wouldn't want too many dying people to get high you know I mean that wouldn't be good for them but they did find in this fairly small study that the, if I'm remembering correctly there was some extension of life and also they were able to show that a particular very important biomolecule called VEGF vascular endothelial growth factor was it turned down and there are other studies that have shown that cannabinoids turn down VEGF and the reason this is interesting is this is one of the therapeutic targets that a lot of uh, pharmaceutical companies are trying to do, to develop uh, drugs for the reason being that cancers we all actually are probably making little cancers in us all the time the reason we don't get tumors and the reason we don't die of cancer is because in the absence of these VEGF and similar compounds, there are about 30 of them now, that in the absence of those compounds, the tumor can't get a blood supply. So it just kind of seals itself off and the immune system basically you know, keeps it under control and nothing happens. But, uh, and cannabinoids have been shown to turn down VEGF and that's what they found in that clinical study that VEGF seemed to have been turned down as well. So it's, it's quite an amazing uh, spectrum of compounds that are in that plant. And what's so unique and incredible about them is they are touching on this incredible system that pervades all of us and regulates everything from, I, I like to tell people, cradle to grave because it's in mother's milk. So it's soothing you from childbirth. It's stimulating the appetite of newborns. It's helping them promote growth. I think <laughs> cannabis is a miracle drug because there's nothing else that impacts on so many of our illnesses. So what are the kinds of things that we can do to try and promote health in these areas? On the one hand, we, everybody should make sure they take in enough essential fatty acids. Uh, they're called essential because we can't make them. And certainly I would say one of the best sources for that is that we should be consuming uh, hemp oil. And the reason I say that as opposed to fish oil is because you can get organic hemp oil, so it's not going to be contaminated with things like mercury. Um, and, and that's going to allow our bodies to make our endocannabinoids. We often hear about the beneficial effects of things like omega-3s and omega-6s. At least some of the attributes of those compounds are the result of them being converted into these endocannabinoids, into these marijuana-like compounds. 
So at least that way your body can do what your body can do. You're giving it the tools to make the things that you need. But in many cases, that's not sufficient, and we have to supplement beyond what our body can make. And there's only one planet, or there's only one plant on the planet that has the capacity to really uh, mimic our immune, the way our body works with these endocannabinoids, and, and that's marijuana. So marijuana actually directly mimics these particular compounds, and as a result, it has these strong neuroprotective effects. But because marijuana and these endocannabinoids, their activities are so pervasive in our body, they literally regulate every system in your body, your immune system, digestive system, reproductive system, cardiovascular system, everything in your body is homeostatically maintained by endocannabinoids, meaning balance. They are, they are how our body tries to balance how we interact with our environment when our environment becomes stressful for us, stressful psychologically, stressful biochemically. Um, so these are very, very critical compounds, and uh, the use of cannabis can have a profound effect in terms of helping to stop nerve degeneration, helping restore functional nerves, helping restore new ways of thinking, uh, and, and this is just really touching on the surface of the humongous number of benefits that this plant can have for so many different illnesses. It's not that uh, we should be limiting it to one thing or another. In, in my mind, for most age-related illnesses, and a lot of these toxin-related illnesses fall into that category in terms of how they affect our cardiovascular system and their immune system and our nervous system and cause cancer. These are all really illnesses that fit under the umbrella of age-related illnesses. And they all have at their basis uh, inflammatory kinds of responses that produce free radicals and what our cannabinoid system is evolved to do over many hundreds of millions of years has been to protect us from those kinds of imbalances, uh, to restore the kind of uh, health that we need. And because of our environment in particular and because we are living longer, we need to be able to adapt very rapidly today. And we can't do that on an evolutionary scale. The way for us to do that as people, as intelligent people, is to make sure we're eating good diets, stay away from toxins, and eat these essential fatty acids, and when necessary, consume cannabinoids.